So James, one of the biggest dangers, I suppose, the risks are, you know, it's climbing. And this is a good example of it. Yeah, well, look, a, 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 a farmer's yard is a natural kind of playground as well and for an adventure and a little bit of thrill seeking. And bales are a perfect opportunity for guys to want to prove that uh, they're, they're agile and able to get to the top of the stack. But there's hidden dangers there, as with many things on the farm. And bales are no different because, because they're naturally stacked four, four bales high. Uh, there's a danger of them toppling over and this can happen a bale that looks perfectly secure when a weight or force comes on it it can slip and uh, a, a bale of silage weighs around 600 kg 700 kg now obviously you won't have them stacked that high but a straw bale can wear about 250 kg so and that causes a lot of damage a lot of damage yeah. if it falls down like so uh, you, you'll be trying to encourage people to stay away from uh, playing in them areas or from be thrill seeking and jumping off or rope, ropes or just having kind of fun near bales but how can you make this a bit safer though yeah and this isn't too bad actually as as a as a farm goes because the bales are naturally lying in uh, what could happen is the bales are, are if they if they if they're stacked high and they can actually lean out towards towards the yard which which creates a danger but to make this a little bit safer a very very simple thing to do is just to run a strap uh, just across the pillars of the shed so the bottom two are f fairly safe. The, the top one, the fourth one, is safe because of the, the top of the shed, but the third one is the, the third one, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there is also the opportunity or the, the possibility that the person climbing could fall. And you look at the height of that shed, it's 25 foot. Uh, like, okay, best case scenario, broken arm or a leg. Worst case scenario, you get a bang in the head and it's a life-changing accident from a simple task like. James, the nicest thing about farming is animals. Yeah. So they're a huge pleasure, but obviously a danger too. What are the kind of things you think people should be aware of? Yeah, well, the thing I always say about an animal is an anim every animal has a different brain and they're, they're unpredictable by that. They're, they're not like a machine, you can't turn them off. So uh, you, you, you have to treat them with the respect that every one of them is an individual and no two animals are the same. So essentially, it is to be aware of the dangers that possibly could happen with them. Now, there's, we're not, you, there's no need to be afraid of animals, and that's something we would stress as well. And we know, like, with horses, for example, ears, back, the, yeah. you know, you can read the signs very easily. But with things like pigs and cows, I mean, what kind of signs would you be particularly looking for? You'll always know an animal that's agitated because there'll be a tail swishing, their ears will change, uh, you'll see them scratching on the ground. So it is just to be careful of them danger signs, just to recognise that an animal is just not happy at the minute and maybe give them a bit of space. So don't be frightened of animals, be confident around them, yeah. stick to the routine that they're in yeah. and don't torment them, don't, don't torment involve them, yourself yeah. in yeah, them exactly. where you shouldn't yeah. be. Exactly, exactly. You can be 14 and drive a tractor legally in, in, in your own farmyard. In your own farmyard. One of the big things about tractors not being the driver but being someone outside is the noise of it but also the size, I mean the yeah. damage that they can do. Yeah, when you look at this tractor, Ella, it's probably, this would be considered actually a small yard tractor but tractors in weight now terms, most tractors weigh about six tons, yeah. five and a half to six tons. So that's a lot of weight uh, coming down on a, on a tire. So if you have that weight, that's three ton force under the tire. So nobody, virtually if that goes over you, it's a non-survivable accident or a life-changing accident. It's frightening, but also yeah. what is so obvious is the fact that whoever's driving that can't see me. Yeah, we were looking at this tractor here and uh, just straight away we look at this and we, we actually can't see the driver. So how is the driver expected to see the people behind him? If you were to estimate what your visibility is reduced by, I'd say there's less than 50% visibility out of that tractor. Yeah. It's very important to have the doors uh, clasping in uh, and to have the steps in good order and to make sure that th this, tra this the cab on the tractor is a safe place to be working in, as well as fitting in with your lights, your indicators and uh, all the necessary requirements for it to make it road legal. Now, an, uh, an interesting thing that's came in this year is that all tractors have to be fitted with a flashing, rotating amber beacon. PTO shaft, I mean, we know the dangers. Yeah, the yeah. dangers. And per, what really, really is good about uh, the campaigns of various organisations and the, the HSA at the minute is that no one was actually killed from a PTO shaft last year, believe it or not. And, okay, we're looking at this shaft here. It's covered, but it's missing the safety chains. It's, uh, there's no, like, no second chances. You, you just get one opportunity. And OK, your luck can run out. You can get away with stuff and you can be really lucky. But there's one day where your luck will run out. Finally, the issue about noise, because what is really clear yeah. about these tractors is actually you can't hear people when they're on. No, that's it. You can, if, if you're, if particularly if the, if the windows are all closed on the tractor, so that's blocking out everybody else from the outside. So it's very hard to get the attention of a driver you know, and that's why it's so important that the driver has good visibility 360 around the, uh, around the tractor. There's no requirement for anyone to have the biggest, most modern tractor, just a workable one, that yeah. it's safe. 
James, machinery is a part of farm life, increasing part, mm. and great fun, and it's all part yeah. of you know learning and all the rest. But uh, things like trailers, I mean, what are the dangers associated with it? The problem is, well, from the from stats and the figures, 50% of all accidents last year are fatal accidents involved machines with kids. Like so, it's a natural. So you're talking about kids dying, dying. from from an involvement with a machine. Something as simple as this. Yeah. Simple things where the where the trailers are parked. Is there wheel chocks on them? If this trailer, uh, if this trailer could be parked in the yard, and what can happen is you could have your back turned to it, and it slides down the yard, and the momentum takes it. You look around, and there's a the trailer mm. behind you, and that's a lot of accidents. All machinery accidents now nearly are all caused by crushing, or pressing, or force, uh, where they either fall out of the cab, they're driven over by a wheel, where a trailer comes detached and it's backed over uh, a crushing injury. James, I mean, we know some of the, the worst cases of farm fatalities have involved. Where yeah, it is. Uh, it's tragic, and often the case that it is, it is tragic, and it's, it's completely avoidable. The danger with slurry is, okay, it's perfectly harmless sitting there where it is, it's safe, but over the winter period, a crust builds over the top of it, and that's keeping all the harmful gases in underneath. But we can't spread the slurry like that, and every farmer knows, like, the agitator has to come in, and it mixes up all the nutrients and the water, so this tank can be emptied from this time of the year. And the, the danger is when the crust goes, you release the gases, methane, carbon dioxide. But the, <coughs> sorry, the most deadly gas is hydrogen sulfide. And that gas comes up, it's odorless. Now, it can, in, in high concentrations, it has a smell of a rotten egg, mm. you know, only for a very brief while. And you, you don't know you're in the danger until it's too late, you know, and you're lying down. And it's one lungful can kill you. And, 30 seconds. There's no need for that to happen. There's a few common sense approach to, to doing it. Having agitation points outside is brilliant because there's, there's air yeah. swirling around through here, so it's taking away the gases. But the animals as well, they should be out of the shed, completely away from any agitation. They're the same. They're, if they get a sniff of the gas, uh, it'll knock them down. And the concentrations where they are, if you look at the concentration, it's much higher down here, about a foot away from the tank, uh, is up higher. If you imagine an animal that's lying on a slat, they're going to get more of it. And finally, aside from the agitation uh, critical issue, what about just falling in? Exactly. And would you believe it, Ella? There's not that of the accidents, uh, who, the people who die in slurry, it's the people, it's falling into the tank. It's the gases, and the gas is, a bit, is fatal and really, really dangerous. But it's uncovered manholes, people falling in, can't get out, a suffocation. On the tank itself, you're looking for a child, for a teenager. If they fall down there, it's impossible really to get out of it. You know? I mean, this mesh is interesting because there's no doubt that a, a baby, a toddler, yeah, can yeah, easily. Yeah. A, a, a common thing: if you can if you can fit a ball down through there, you can fit a child down through there. Mm. So that mesh, uh, to rectify that mesh, either uh, put an extra bar in on it. Again, not a huge a huge cost. It's one extra little bit of rebar. It's about ten minutes work with a person that's handy with the welder, and it can save a life. James, we know the dangers of bulls. Everyone, yeah. even non-farmers, know that. Yeah. But we don't talk enough. I don't think about cows, do we? No, not really. Especially at this time of the year, it's, it's a fantastic time. Like uh, it's a, you can just see see behind us here. We have a Aberdeen Angus cross and a two-day-old calf. She's looking to protect the, her offspring, and. All of us here around, we have to respect that, and we stay back our, our, and away and give her a bit of space. And the fact she's a first-time mother, yeah, is exactly. that even more dangerous? More dangerous, yeah, because she's not used to it. This is all new to her. If you have to handle it, you, you have to come with a way, either a gate or some way of separating the mother from the calf. If you have to give the calf a dose, then that mother has to be pushed away and gently eased into a position where she's safe and in a confined area where she can't get and kick you or knock you over. And then you can work on the calf and administer whatever antibiotics or whatever is needed, you know. So don't, as a routine, just walk in. Exactly. Yeah. Even being really, really comfortable with animals, always have it in the back of your mind that something can happen, you know. And is there a place, if something happens in here, have I a place that I can get out of danger? Can I get over that gate? Can I get away and uh, get myself into a safe position until she calms down? James, it's easy when you live on a farm not to think too much about hygiene isn't yeah. it? you know to be washing your boots and using water and all the rest but it's a kind of a good routine to get into yeah well look at we, we, we have to worry about our own safety on the farm but we also have to worry about you bringing disease and risks into the animals themselves they're powerless like um, often farmers will be quite get quite a number of visitors from vets people delivering meal uh, farmers journal farmers journal <laughs> bank of ireland or whoever comes in on a daily basis and so and there them people in their work will naturally could be in five or six farms during the day or maybe more 
And th the problem is we don't want to be bringing disease from one farm to the other. The water just wash off the boots and on your hands especially uh, coming into, into the yard. And it's important then leaving the yard that you kind of do the same thing, that you disinfect your boots and you take them off here, wash your hands and you know you're not you're, you're containing the risk like we we all saw what foot and mouth did to this country back in 2001 virtually brought to a standstill and we did a really good job of containing it and that was down to the use of foot baths uh, down to the use of uh, trucks and trailers being washed out and uh, curtailing the spread of the disease with the disinfectants and chemicals it's another risk on a farm like to have the disinfectant here is not a good idea because inquisitive people uh, they concentrate con bottle. concentrated bottle yeah. so the disinfectant should be stored away locked away completely with any other chemicals that's on the yard there's obviously uh, in a yard a lot of roof space yeah and the temptation is if there's a problem to get up and fix it straight away if you're not comfortable with heights you should just call someone else to do it you know and that's uh, if you if you if you're not confident on a ladder or you're not confident uh, to go up there then it's a simple job give someone else but if you are going to do the job then you have to look at the dangers as well. So a good secure ladder, uh, ensuring that if, you're, if you have to power wash that roof, that you avoid walking on skylights. You can get there is, uh, and it's, it's a kind of a mesh guard underneath the skylight. So the skylight works, but there's a guard underneath it. So even if you do fall, if the skylight does crack, that you're, you're on the guard, you're on the mesh. It'll catch you. It'll catch you. Yeah. But that question, what yeah. is the danger? Walk around your farm and yeah. ask that question repeatedly. Yeah. What is, is the, the danger? danger? Think of yeah. the worst case scenario. Yeah, exactly. Simple walk through the yard every day and take your 60 seconds to think to yourself, oh, that is dangerous. You know, that hose on the ground is dangerous. That gate is hanging wrong. Uh, the door missing off the tractor. Uh, the bullpen with maybe rope tying up the gate. You know, simple little things that shouldn't be done on the farm you know, or that shouldn't be in practice that should be altered.